a soap to clean all the things? Can she soap it? I prepped the citric acid before adding it to the soap. I used enough distilled water to dissolve it completely and then I set it off to the side until I needed it. After preparing the citric acid, I began making my lye solution. I weighed out the distilled water and then I weighed out the lye beads. These are actually Bell Chemical food grade lye beads in a different brand container that has a child safe lid. This is a 100% coconut oil soap. Coconut oil has a low melting point of 72 degrees, and the heat transfer method is perfect for making this batch of soap. After I stirred the lye into the water really, really well, I added it to the coconut oil. It took several minutes to melt the oil down completely. There are many variations on all-purpose cold process cleaning soaps, but I have found I really love this version. Most cleaning soaps have a 0% superfat, or some even use a negative superfat, which means they're a little lye heavy. This recipe has a 0% superfat, and I added 1.5% of the oil weight in citric acid. Citric acid does not lower the pH level of the soap, contrary to many people's beliefs. It does, however, act as a chelator, which can reduce the contribution to soap scum that can develop. I will leave links to sources I used to develop this recipe in the description box. This is lemongrass essential oil, which I thought would make a fantastic scent for an all-purpose cleaning soap. Now it's time to incorporate the citric acid into the soap batter. In the next batch of soap that I made using this recipe, I added the citric acid to the soap batter at emulsion instead of putting it in before using the stick blender like I did this time. Then I weighed the soap out into the individual containers they would be sold in. These containers are number two plastic. When the soap finished curing, I placed a scrubby into the container and popped the lid on. Later I decided I liked the square based containers better because I could fit a bigger scrubber in there with the soap. The picture at the end of the video is from the latest batch of this soap in the square shaped containers and scented with lavender essential oil. Yes, my vanity is disgusting. Yes, it needed to be disgusting so you can see how this soap works. I take a wet sponge and rub it on the soap to lather it up. 
This will inevitably leave water on the soap and in the tub it's in. So I pour the soapy water onto the surface I'm cleaning. Hey, waste not, want not. After rubbing the soap onto the surface, I allow the soap to have about a minute of dwell time to do its magic of breaking down the grime. Then it takes very little elbow grease to scrub the nasty off. Once it's all scrubbed, I usually take a dry towel and wipe off the wet soapy surface. This time I tried a wet towel first, but I didn't feel like it was really helpful or did much of anything. Using a wet towel to wipe the soap off of the mirror did help reduce the streaks on the glass, but it wasn't exceptionally helpful for the sink and vanity. I've been using a two-step clean then disinfect method for years. If you look on your disinfectants or sanitizers, that product needs to be applied to a clean surface before it will disinfect or sanitize. And it usually has to sit wet on the surface for several minutes before it disinfects or sanitizes. Bleach and alcohol are common exceptions to that. That doesn't mean you wipe the surface down and it's dry and sanitized in a minute or two. That means you have to wet the surface enough to keep the surface wet for sometimes four minutes or longer before it's disinfected or sanitized. If the surface is dirty, those products won't sanitize or disinfect either way. You've really got to remove the dirt and grime sufficiently and then use whatever disinfectant you prefer afterwards. And please make sure to follow the directions on the product you choose as your disinfectant or sanitizer.